Hello guys and welcome to Chuesto Park. This is the final episode. My name is Heister and thank you so much for stopping by as always. So we are going to have a little tour of the park and I think we'll start at the front where we built the main habitats first. So the proboscis monkey, I've been learning to say that correctly without sounding stupid. Over here was one of the, like a kind of experiment as well that I was building. When I built it in the first original park, obviously we transferred to this area because of the corruption made by the Bintrong habitat over here. I wanted to try and put this down and everything was kind of very difficult to line up but uh, it managed to work out very nicely and I did make a few alterations to that as well but I like this habitat I again it's it's not to everyone's taste I know that and it's it, it, it can be kind of like if you you love it or you hate it or um, you might just think it's all right actually but no I mean it, it's I, I know it's not to everyone's taste and it's it's a kind of experiment for me to try and build things that are not your normal kind of style of building that was what i was going for and that kind of leaves us uh, leads us not leaves us leads us over to the bintong habitat again where i was experimenting with kind of using bent glass and huge viewing area for the staff because it's always quite busy here as well so it seems to work quite nicely and you can see quite well into the habitat again you can see where they are there's the logo i made someone stuck in a wall looks like the hsbc logo so we go in here and you can see there's loads of them now and uh, I think I sold a couple of them because there was um, becoming like a swarm. Oh no, look, they've had more little babies. There's loads and loads. I never knew they breed so fast. Super, super cute though. They're like tiny little ferrets. Well, obviously the bay ones, not the giant ones. Uh, so yeah, that was the another experimental build I was doing. I was trying to get this a bit uh, like with a curved sense, kind of really modern style. And trying to get this to line up at an angle was very, very difficult for myself. But again, it's all learning as well try and find out what I can build now down here we have the clouded leopard over here kind of kind of out of the way a little bit but they still get plenty of views you can see the guests in there now okay one group two group but there's some people there they come along they see it and uh, yeah they look quite happy in there again this was a build where I wanted to kind of make something uh, at a weird shape weird angle with a fence again not to keep it over not to make it over complicated but just to keep it nice and simple Nice, nice viewing for the guests as well, so they get a lovely view into the habitat. So as you can see there, we need some more building work done, but we'll just try and avoid that one. There we go. So then we went on to the Babarose habitat, which I built this curve roof. Sometimes I look at this and I feel it has like an Asian theme to it. I think because of the wooden top and the, the curved style kind of makes it look a little bit Asian, but I went with a little design I found on Pinterest where they had this, uh, it, was, it was made of wood, not actual the plaster I was using. But it was kind of floating and it was like this wall was floating against another wall but they weren't actually touching it was a really really unique design and again i know it's not like super duper oh dear super duper pretty but it was again trying to just make something that was a little bit different trying to test myself push myself to create something that i thought would be a bit of a challenge for myself and again i was quite happy with the outcome it looks like a kind of a boat as well sometimes doesn't it, it looks kind of funny but again i think the guests get a lovely view in there I can see right right into there as they come along. Little baby Babarusa there coming down like a steam train. Fantastic. Look at those horns. So we'll go on to the next um, habitat, which I think is over here. So we go to the Sombe. So the Sombe habitat was the one I deleted because I think that the amount of pieces that I had in the building was just causing huge memory problems. Like this part was spiking to about 20 gigabytes, which I know is not normal. It shouldn't be that high, but ever since I deleted it, not a problem. I originally thought it was a Bintong habitat, although that barrier was crashing the park. I think both of them together were causing major problems, but it's all sorted now and we're, um, we're back to playing at normal memory. So here is the leaf insect. I just put this along here. There's not too much you can really do. I was thinking about building more into like an area, but I, I didn't want to add animals in the park that weren't part of the pack. So the Samba habitat, you come across a bridge and it's kind of open. You have to kind of bypass it to get into the park. Uh, not into the park, but into the next area of the park. So you can go along to see the next habitat. But you can see they've got a little bridge they go underneath. They've got a lovely climbing frame over here. One sitting down there sleeping. Something I need to do. And then over here you can see more climbing frames. In fact, it's quite majestic. I love the style of um, where, like here, for instance, you can see they're climbing. And you almost like, you could not touch in distance, but jumping distance maybe. You can see it's a really nice view for the guests. So as you come down here, you can see some rocks, overgrown grass. I kind of like the overgrown grass on the paths. It kind of gives it a little bit of a, uh, like a, a used vibe to it. 
kind of like it's not perfectly neat because you know things do overgrow and it's hard to keep track of things especially like in your garden with weeds and stuff so over here we have the dolls nice area loads of space for them to uh, to run around and again they just remind me of like garden foxes especially in the uk we have like foxes that come in your garden they look for like food and stuff and uh, they look pretty much identical I, I don't even turn i don't know if they're from the same family whether they're from uh like yeah the same family and if they're sort of related in some way but yeah they're really really cute so this building here was in fact uh i i used this building from a mod on the workshop now this was something i wanted to talk about as well so i haven't really used mods from the workshop i don't tend to use anything even props or anything like that and I had a look through uh, the other night and I didn't realise the amount of amazing content that is in the workshop that just seems to go unnoticed, that doesn't seem to get um, a lot of views or visitors on the actual Steam Workshop page. So I'm um, it's going to lead me on to my next kind of thing I want to do after Planet Zoo as well. I want to start showcasing some of the uh, other people's mods because I think they need some attention because some of them are absolutely fantastic and I think it'd be really nice to bring that to light and if we can all kind of like see them as well i think we can really appreciate their work which is yeah leads me to this kind of conversation so uh, this was kind of twice the size it was going along here i thought this whole area and i cut it in half i kept the wall but as you can see the the person who built this they used every single piece i like the fact that they, it's completely custom built i can see the hours of work that's gone into that it's absolutely fantastic and i just i like that kind of it's again it's 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 simple it's really simple and clean but you can see the work that's gone into it. It's got the overlowing, uh, overgrowing grass on the tops. They can go inside there to have a nice little sleep. I love the rock and the damaged walls. How it's not perfectly straight and it bends up so slightly. I think it's fantastic. Over here, a little sand pit. Well, they can go run in there. I don't even know if they use sand pits. I just pumped it down. I thought it would be a good idea. And uh, so, yeah, that's the doll area for the guests to come along. But they're only just kind of discovering it because it was the last habitat I put in here. They're just just about finding their way down to the end of the park so yes guys that's pretty much uh i would say the end of chuesto again it's uh, when i build the parks i'm always end up questioning myself about what i build and how i build it and i tend to give myself a bit of a kick in where i think to myself i'm not uh, i always think i can do so much better when i'm building it and I, I i'm never happy with my final product and i always want to try and make something better but I don't think that's too bad because that might give me more encouragement to make another park and then maybe spend a bit more time, a bit more dedication to each habitat and try and make it better. So I've always got something to aim for, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll never be happy with it. But um, anyway, it's about if you guys like it, I hope you do. And uh, it's something I will continue to do. But I am going to have, I would say, a couple of weeks off Planet Zoo, have a little break away from it and uh, give myself a bit of like brain time, like... You know, not not have Planet Zoo on my brain 99%, and just try and come away and come back a bit more fresh. Planets, hopefully, create something a bit better. Um, so yes, guys, I will leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for coming along uh, and all your support as well. It means super, super duper a lot to me. So thank you for that, and I will catch you guys very, very soon. Thank you for watching, guys. See you later. Bye bye.